Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest version of uh, Tales, Tales from Tales, Outer Tales, Space, Tales, Space, Tales, Space, where I take an HFY story from somewhere around the internet and read it aloud for your enjoyment. All the relevant links are down below. Like, subscribe, and all that YouTube comf to help this video and channel grow. Anyways, as always, I hope that you enjoy. I would just like to thank the following tier 5 patrons and channel members for supporting the channel. Data Magnet and Bob the Dragon. Thank you again. And now, on to the story. Humans are scary. Written by Ace Sero. Most of the galaxy species are hardier, stronger, faster, even tougher. But if you ask any warrior of the Hathroxy or the Anami Warbringers, which species they would least like to meet in the battlefield, almost every single one will answer, human. Humans aren't particularly strong. A Mitosian worker drone can easily do anything a human can, so long as the task requires some strength. They aren't particularly fast. A Kildari can walk faster than a human can jog. They aren't particularly tough. They aren't covered with a hardened exterior like you might find on the dog or other species who are neither strong nor fast. No, what makes humans scary are two assets unique to them, their regenerative abilities and what humans call imagination. On their own, such abilities are rare amongst the various species of the galaxy. A Hathroxy warrior is easily capable of lifting a stone many times its own size, Whereas the strongest of humans have to vigilantly work to maintain its strength to even approach that level. But a Hathroxy who tears too many muscle fibers in its appendages loses the limb, and has to undergo life-threatening surgery to regrow it afterwards. Humans tear their muscle fibers all the time, and in all but the most extreme circumstances, all they need is a full planet cycle's rest in order to recover from it. What's more, the strain induced from such an act would only form more muscle fibers to not only replace the lost and torn fibers, but coax the human body to create more. This results in human strength growing, and is probably the source of the old human adage, what doesn't kill you, makes you stronger. If one were to attack both a human and a dog with a claw or melee weapon, they would find that while the human external layer is easy to penetrate compared to the armored shell of a dog, a human's body will only need to recover for a few cycles, provided no major organs were struck. Whereas a dog's muscles may need several dozen lunars in order to fully recover, provided the dog in question is still young in the formative phase. This unheard of regeneration rate, again unique to humans, is formidable on its own. But what makes humans scary is how they realize their regenerative properties give them an edge in survival situation, and have combined it with their previously mentioned imagination. Now, what is this concept, you might be wondering? Imagination refers to humans' innate ability to grasp abstract concepts, or come up with ideas the same way researchers and scientists do in other species. What makes humans unique is that there isn't a simple caste or other group of individuals in this species that share this trait. All humans have imagination, from the youngest human broodling to the honored elders of their kind. Each of them can grasp new ideas in ways other species would have difficulty even comprehending. What makes humans scary is that their imaginations, coupled with their advanced regeneration abilities, allows for the birth of an entirely new concept, cybernetic augmentation. For most species, the idea of implanting a tiny supercomputer in your mind in order for it to run parallel processes is suicidal. But humans, with their regenerative properties, can not only survive such surgeries as to make an insane idea viable, they can do it with such a rate that nearly every human has in some way shape or form become cybernetically augmented. Some humans cannot naturally run as fast as the Kaldari, so they implant specialized cybernetics in their legs to help them keep pace. Some humans cannot match the Hathroxy in strength, so they lop off their arms and replace those with cybernetics much more powerful than human muscles, and ones that can be easily repaired if damaged. 
even when augmented in this way on the minimalistic level, humans are scary. Perhaps more scary than their fully augmented brethren. One human, in particular, a bounty hunter by the name of Robin, gave himself a single piece of cybernetics, an implant directly into the base of his skull. On its own, it only allows him to think faster and interface with computer systems without the need to be physically at a terminal. But it also allowed him to develop a terrifying weapon, one he used to perform his task with a deadly efficiency. I had the privilege of seeing this bounty hunter in action once. It was at a small refueling station on the edge of the Vega system. A violent Tildari criminal was running from the Galactic Concord's authority. The Concord had put out a bounty on the wanted murderer Ziska'al, and it was Robin who made the capture. Ziska'al was stopped at the station to get fuel for his ship. Everyone immediately recognized him. But being that the Tildari were death world predators by nature, no one wanted to interfere with him, myself included. Then a small human vessel stopped to refuel. The human must have recognized as Ka'al's vessel because he had docked in the opposite side of the same hangar. When the human stepped out, no one wanted to get in his way. Everyone recognized the armor of a human warrior having seen the new speeds in the First and Second Terran System War. Robin had five long metallic blades attached to his backpack. Personal scans showed them to be melee weapons. I think I was the only one willing to scan him when I saw him disembark in the hangar, though if he detected my scan, he gave no sign of it. I'd been on my way to run a diagnostic on my ship in preparation for takeoff four fractions later but I felt that I could put it off for a time. I saw the bounty hunter emblem on Robin's shoulder, and I knew Ziska'al was present on the station, so I was eager to see how things would play out. I think it's prudent at this time to mention that I'm a journalist, though I'm only just now breaking into the field, and I couldn't let this chance to see a bounty hunter catch a criminal pass me by, especially since both of the belligerents were death worlders. I engaged my camera drone and followed the human as he made his way into the station. It didn't take long for the bounty hunter to find his quarry. The Skaal was seated in a small table in the food court, waiting for clearance from the station AI to contact him to tell him that his ship had been fully refueled and decontaminated. The human walked with purpose up to the table, the dark visor on his helmet focused intently on the Teldari in front of him. What makes Taldari threatening is a combination of four arms ending in three hands tipped with claws and a large jaw with two rows of teeth. They are carnivorous predator on their homeworld, and in extreme cases, such as the Ziska'al, they were willing to hunt and eat other sapient creatures. Aside from five melee weapons on Robin's back, I saw no other weaponry on his person. I wondered how a human with half the number of limbs as his quarry, would even bother with more than two such weapons. Not only that, their size made them unwieldy for a human using only one hand. So why would he have five? The answer came to me as the confrontation swiftly began. I had made the mistake of not properly tuning my translator, so I can only give you a general idea of what was said. Robin had declared his intent to arrest this Ka'al, and urged him to cooperate so no one got hurt. The Tildari replied with a low growl, kicking the table at the human before jumping into a combat stance, declaring his intent to turn Robin into a meal. I saw Robin back away from Ziska'al, before putting his hand to the side of his head, and what I saw both amazed me and confused me. All five melee weapons on Robin's back suddenly flew out of their holdings and began hovering near his body, pointing themselves at Ziska'al. This astounded me, as I knew of only two races that had been confirmed to have some sort of psionic power, and neither of those species showed psionics on this level. I would learn later that Robin's implant allowed him to use his own thoughts to direct personal drones. These drones that he camped with him in the form of five long souls, as they're called on his home world. 
and seeing these five melee weapons floating around this human unsettled the Tatari criminal. Several times, the skull attempted to lunge at Robin, and each time one of the swords swiped at his reptilian aggressor, causing him to back away. Taldari are generally stronger and faster than humans, and with four limbs, they can easily rip apart the primate species like humans in unarmed combat. But humans make up for the difference in personal combat ability through the use of unique tools, as demonstrated by the clash I saw before me. Whenever Ziskaal attempted to get close or run away, Robin responded with one of his swords, keeping the criminal where he was. This tense exchange went on for a good five microfractions before Ziskaal got desperate and made to take a bystander as a hostage. As soon as Robin realized what was happening, one of his swords acted and chopped off Ziskahal's hand. The Tadari roared in pain as he stumbled back, and two more swords pinned him to the wall by the neck, before the combination of the missing limb and the reminder that the floating melee weapons were still a threat convinced Ziskahal to surrender. I didn't get a chance to interview Robin, only learn his name from the station authorities as the human returned to his ship with his quarry in tow. Apparently, he had already filled out the necessary forms for taking Ziskaal into custody and transmitted them before his ship had even docked. Usually, such things are done after a prisoner has been confirmed to be in custody. Yet, this human bounty hunter did it before he even set foot on the refuting station as if he knew how the confrontation would end. Was this done out of arrogance or confidence? Who can say? But with the choice in weaponry, I personally am of the latter camp. After all, who would be imaginative enough with a way to deal with flying melee weapons? Only a human would be able to even come up with something like that. And that made me believe one thing for certain. Humans are scary. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed. And if you do, please consider supporting the author, even by popping over and leaving a thumbs up or a nice comment just to show your appreciation for the story. However, if you wish to support this channel, there are links down below which will help immensely. I will see you all in the next one. And until then, I hope that you have a fantastic day. Cheers.